Okay, hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I've got something slightly different for you today. Um, I just want to talk about, you know, starting off an idea in Ableton, like the one you just heard. Um, it's kind of a good way to get a foundation laid down for a track. Also some good techniques in there for people like myself, which don't really have a strong music theory knowledge. Okay, so to go to get started, we have this, um, the low end group here, which houses the kick drum and the bass. So for my kick drums, I use this plugin called Bassism. Uh, it's a nice little plugin, really. You can adjust the attack um, here in the sweep section. So I like nice punch kick drums. So this plugin is absolutely great for that. Um, it's also good as it's easily to you can tune your kicks easily with your song, so it gels well with the bass drum, for example which is very important. Okay, so moving on to the bass, we have this operator plugin here. Nothing fancy or technical going on really, you just have one oscillator, it's playing a square wave, and you can see here in the filter section, uh, I've filtered out a lot of the high end as well. I'm also running it through this MS2 filter drive. Um, so when you boost the drive here in this part, it just adds more dirt and oomph to the bass really. So here's how that sounds. Okay, so just, uh, yeah, so the EQ I've got after that bass is just cutting out some of the extreme lows, which you can't hear. And then I've just got a bit of side chain compression with the kick, just let the kick drum cut through the mix a bit more. Okay, so next up we've got the top section. Okay, so this is just a drum rack playing, you know, I've got loads of random samples in there, like a wood block, little hi-hats, some snares, etc. Um, Again, running that for an EQ8, cutting out all the low end here. Um, also running it for an effect rack. So in the first chain, we have a Camel Crusher plugin. Uh, this is a free plugin, I believe, and yeah, it just adds a bit more dirt to sounds. So, and I've got that dialed in, this effect rack here, to a, uh, it's next to a clean chain as well. I've also just got a compressor at the end, which is uh, just gluing those two tracks together. Okay, so here's how that sounds to get with the low end. So to move on in this group channel here. Okay, so this is, I like this technique a lot really. So if I turn this auto filter off, this is how this sample here sounds. I've just got basically a pad sample loaded into a simpler. You can see there from the MIDI that it's playing on beats one and two. So again, nothing fancy at all there really. I've got some ping pong delay, a bit of EQ8 cutting up the low end again, some saturator to give it some grit and dirt, and then I've got some compressor at the end just to tighten up the sound. But going back to this also filter, I'll show you what this does. So as you can see here, if we reduce, if we reduce that frequency, Okay, so what this is doing is taking, I'm sidechaining this to this SC trigger channel here, which is actually a drum rack. And at the moment I've got the audio to sends only. Let me just uh, make that so we can hear it. So it's just, yeah, housing, you know, I've got little toms in there, any kind of bleepy sound. It's not really that important to be honest, because um, all this is doing is giving this auto filter in the call channel, um, it's giving it a sidechain signal basically. So if you move the, feel, uh, the frequency down and we give, we adjust this envelope here, it will take the signal from that SC trigger channel and yeah, play a side chain with them. So I'll show you an example. Yeah, if you then just yeah, send the audio to sends only so we don't actually hear it playing back in the track. Yeah, I find that's, that's quite a nice technique I like to use just to get a little foundation down for a track. And then to move on, we have this analog uh, synth here. Uh, this is just playing a G minor chord. I've also just um, duplicated some of the notes and raised them up an octave and down an octave. Nothing technical or fancy there at all, really. And then I've got this arpeggio to play in 16th notes here. Okay. 
Okay, so you can see I've got two oscillators running, both of them are square waves here, both raised up an octave, and in the first oscillator, I've raised that by a, five, a fifth above, five semitones. Um, then you can see I've just cut off a lot of the, um, the high end here. Obviously you can adjust that, automate that as a track plays along. And then I've just got a bit of unison detune as well. So just to give it a bit more character really. Um, and then effects wise, just a bit of EQ8 again, cutting up the low end, some reverb, only a slight touch really, nothing drastic. And then some ping pong delay just to give it more space. So here's how that all sounds together. Oh, I've just got a bit of um, a vinyl audio playing in the background here as well. So yeah, that just you know gives it a bit more of a vintage feel, really. Just put that uh, light in the background. But yeah, everything played together sounds like this. So yeah, I mean, that's just basically how I start off an idea in Ableton at the, t at the moment. Um, I hope you found some of the techniques I have talked about useful and yeah, any questions, just leave me a message or uh, yeah, give me a comment. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.